Welcome to Where's the Any Key, the podcast where we talk shop about topics, tips, and trends for the modern IT admin. I'm your host, Ryan Bacon, the IT support manager at Jump Cloud. Joining me today is Yiddy Lemmer. He's the CEO of CompuConnect, a professional IT services company in New York. Thank you for coming on and chatting with me, y- Yiddy. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you for hosting me, Ryan. Uh, my pleasure yeah. to join on this, uh, on this podcast. Yeah, definitely. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so um, I launched my company, Copy Connect. You mentioned it earlier, uh, about a little shy of four years ago, uh, in 2017. Uh, we are based in Brooklyn, in New York City. Uh, our client base is here as well. Uh, we are we work exclusively on a managed service agreement, so we don't do break fix. We work on uh, agreements only, and our Preferred client vertical are CPAs, accountants, and bookkeepers. Uh, prior to me opening my company, I was an in-house uh, IT administrator, systems administrator for a watch company, also here in Brooklyn. Uh, when I joined, actually at a pretty young age, um, I was there. The company had 35 employees, and I grew with the company as well as experience and as well as um, exposure to different technologies uh, over over the seven years that I was there. And um, by the time I left, the company had two locations and 150 employees with uh, lots of technology under, under their belt. And, um, and then I launched my, uh, my company, Copy Connect, to get to know other companies and <laughs> meet other people and um, interface with more technology. And because I, I, love, I love interacting with people and learning about all different types of businesses. Yeah, definitely. Um, what we what we're going to chat about today is something that I've been wanting to talk to somebody about for a long time, and it's something that I would imagine that every single IT admin out there has at least thought about a little bit, and that is making that jump from working for a company to starting your own company. Absolutely. So, so where. You started almost like you said almost four years ago. Let's start with this. What what made you decide to make that leap? Okay, so I mean the, the nature of, of technology companies, IT companies, I'm not gonna speak for all of them, but the vast majority of IT companies are started by uh, a tech guy that's great at doing what he's doing, um, and, and for one reason or another it can start from something your manager told you or a boss told you that got you upset and you got fed up or you feel like, hey, why am I busting my traps and working crazy hours and have no life? Why am I doing it for somebody else? Let me just do it for, for myself. And, you know, I'm, I'm great. I'm doing everything anyway. Why not just do it for myself and make more money? Uh, that's where a lot, a lot of it starts from. Um, for me, uh, on the other hand, um, I was working for a company. I was getting compensated very, very nicely. And it just it came to a point for me. I'm I'm a high achiever. I, I'm always trying to reach higher. I'm always trying to get to places, which is which is a double-edged sword. It's it's good and bad at the same time, because you can't stop and appreciate what you have. But that's 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 the constant struggle of life. But um, for me, I was working at a company for seven years. Uh, it was the same people every single day. It was the same environment every single day. It was the same common issues every single day. And and as much as I, I wanted to, to learn new technologies and introduce new technologies to the company, they didn't share the same passion that I shared for technology. And, and they were very happy. They were set up. They, they heeded a lot of my advice and they took a lot of my advice and guidance. And we did implement a lot, uh, but it just it, it stopped. You know, it stopped. So I hit a plateau uh, and it wasn't because of salary. It was just really because of the environment and stuff. So. I, I needed to get out. I, I needed to do something for myself. I wanted to interact with with different businesses and and, and see how other people um, work and 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 also interact with and and this will also give me an opportunity to now interact with different technologies because different companies have different needs, different companies have different budgets, different companies have different wants. So it, it gives me the opportunity to to expand my knowledge and my experience and my exposure. Yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense because in in my mind the you know what tells what signals to me that it's time to you know change change jobs change companies that sort of thing is if I feel like I'm starting to stagnate then that's 
that's like the worst possible place I, you know, I could be because, you know, you don't want to get bored and technology is changing constantly. And if you, if you settle, if you end up settling, then, then yeah, there's no growth. There's no challenge. Then for me, that there's no interest anymore. And I, I'm not sure exactly what the, what the quote is, but they say basically that, that, being comfortable, comfort is the is the biggest enemy of. I, I don't know how to finish that sentence, guy. I'm not sure exactly how it ends, but ba basically, being comfort, being comfortable is not a good thing. It's not a good right. Thing. Yeah, I, gosh, I know, I know what what quote you're talking about, and it's it's uh, it's something along the lines of comfort is the greatest enemy of growth, or something, some it's, something that, along that, those lines. Yeah, and I, I, it's, it's definitely what the. the quote is, is, is trying to, to teach us but 100 percent being comfortable is is not good in any way shape or form yeah and oh man <laughs> that, i and it's interesting that the the your your solution to 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 fighting that stagnation to or your solution to growth was jumping into you know self you know creating your own business and oh, and so, whereas like for other people it's like oh like i was saying it's like it's oh it's time for me to go get a job at another company okay right so full disclaimer here i always i'm come my, my family i come from my, my my family is all business owners and entrepreneurs so you know our, our round table or dining room table conversation was always about business 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 so it, it's been it's been in me and it's something i've been wanting to do I, i've always my, my vision was always to own my own company so um, when I hit that plateau or that stagnation, I, my next step was was you know opening my own company. So it's always been something I wanted to do. Yeah, and that that makes perfect sense. I think I think mindset, personality, you know, ambitions that plays a large role into it. Because I, I mentioned to you when we talked before that that I you know like a lot of IT people, I do I do stuff on the side and. It's I, I've thought about growing it further, but like that's that's not what I want to do. So it's at least not at this point. So oh. it, it's really I I do think that you know how your you know your your environment and your your personality and your drives that definitely you know plays a big role into it. And I I, I think that's just really interesting to see different people's perspectives. Yeah, on this I have to warn thing. you though that that opening your own business is not the solution. It's not always the solution. It's it's, it's a, a lot more. And I, I touched on this earlier a little bit in the beginning. You know, I realized I was going a little side. I wasn't answering the question directly, so I kind of moved back. But m many IT companies start out as a technician that's very good at what he's doing, and he feels like, hey, what the heck, I can just do it for myself and make a lot more money. And um, and that's how many IT companies are born. Uh, there's so much more than being a technician and being a tech and doing the work for when it comes to owning an IT company. Um, I, I try to prepare myself as much as I can, if that's even a thing. I mean, you can't really prepare before you launch a company. There's just that much you can do. But when I launched my company, uh, I did give about four or five months notice uh, before I left my, my, my old position. And um, I used all that time to prepare myself. I did a lot of research into different uh, stack, the technology stacks that I want to use, uh, pricing models. And um, I, I knew right away that I, I'm going to try to avoid as many mistakes as I can that other IT companies have been there and done that. So, and, and namely, there's a big shift in a big way that IT companies operate. There is a, a break fix mentality uh, where when something is broken, give me a call. Um, I'll come down and charge you for my time and I'll see you in a few weeks, months, or years. Um, and then there is the managed services mentality where it is, you, you take you take the proactive approach where you try to avoid, you try to do everything in your power to avoid an outage, to avoid downtime, to avoid um, issues with workstations to avoid a cyber breach. Um, it's also very much relationship based. It, you know, be, because you're working on a monthly uh, retainer or because you're building your clients monthly, you have the opportunity. It's not automatic, and I'll touch on that in a minute as well. 
It's not automatic that you have a good relationship with your clients, but you have a bigger opportunity to have a relationship with your clients, a real good relationship with your clients. Uh, and then you start working with quality over quantity. Um, the first way, the break fix model is, you know, your local fire station for anybody and everybody. Uh, it, it's it's feast and famine. I mean, sometimes it'll be crazy. You can't catch your breath. You're, you're chasing your tail. And then some weeks it'll be completely dead and there's zero income, zero phone calls, zero dollars. And, and the worst part about all this is that you start the month, you know, the first of the month, you start with zero. I mean, you got, you got mortgages, you got rent, you got bills, you got payroll, and you have no idea where the money is coming from. I mean, you have some history to look back on, uh, you know, we have seasons and trends and stuff, and you want to start predicting like that, but there's really no, there's nothing to predict it. There's, there's nothing to forecast it. It's, it's, it's by chance, and it's very, very, very stressful. So when I launched, I knew right away that I'm not going to jump into this and just start serving everybody and anybody that needs help, and then later figure out that this is a detrimental model for any IT company and then later have to fire all these clients and, and start all over again from zero after, you know, who knows what, mortgaging my house to make payroll and, and, and ruin my reputation and not being able to deliver on my promises. So from day one, I started out with this managed service, managed services model. It evolved greatly to when I started. I have to admit it started with some kind of amateur pricing model, but at least I knew that's what I'm doing. That's what right. I did, and that's what I did. Um, yeah, I mean that, that's that's yeah, that's, that's basically it. Yeah, and there's also a, there's also another benefit that I've that I've heard of with the the managed services model, and that is the perception of the customer in in relation to you. So with with a break fix model, pretty much every time that your customer interacts with you, it's you know there's something going wrong they're agitated and stuff and that that relation that that kind of feeling is linked to their relationship with you so it's not may not always be the most positive thing but on a, on the managed side you are it's a lot more positive you're there you're you're preventing problems you know every you know interactions that you have with your customers aren't always revolving around something going wrong for sure, and that's sure. and that's that, there, that there's a little bit of psychology there that that means it's a much more it's a much more positive relationship or a, lot, a much more uh, positive connection between the the customer and and yourself. And I find that you know that that bit of psychology is is really interesting as well. It is, and it's a, it's a great point, and I actually use it as part of my sales process. One of the very first things I mentioned, uh, my sales process consists of uh, at least two in-person meetings. Now with COVID, we have to switch some things up, but, um, but my sales process consists of at least two in-person meetings. I don't, send a, I don't send a proposal by email ever. Um, I come down and I present it in person, and I can, I can then control the narrative. I can then control the, the feelings and the thought process. Uh, during the presentation of my proposal, as opposed to the business owners going straight to the last page, all the way to the bottom, look at the look at the price and then work their way up. But going back to what you just said, my one of the very first things in my sales process is I'm saying that we work we have, we take a very different approach to IT. Uh, the the conventional you know, break fix. We're essentially on two we're on two different teams. We're not it's, it's not the same business. It means. The, the break fix model, they make money when you are down and hurting and not productive and having issues. That is when they make money. We make money when you don't call. As soon as you pick up the phone and reach out for help, reach out for support, our profitability starts going down because we have a flat rate, you know, monthly fee. So mm -hmm. now it's in my best interest and for my company to make sure that everything works perfectly and to make sure that nobody calls for support. Uh, as soon as somebody calls, like I said, that's when we start logging time. That's when it starts you know, affecting profitability and, and bottom line. As opposed to the other side of the aisle where um, they only make money when you have issues. So, of course, they're not, uh, they're not praying that somebody has issues and some call, somebody call them. Or maybe they are because really that's really the only way they're making money. So 
they're also not incentivized to fix it quickly. You know, they can hire amateur technicians because I don't care if it takes them a half hour, or if it takes them an hour, or it takes them five hours. Um, I'm getting paid by the hour. I'm billing them by the hour. So mm -hmm. they're not incentivized to have good technicians or fast technicians or smart technicians. They can hire people straight out of school, um, extreme amateurs, and and do and just you know just get it resolved. I don't care how long it takes or whatever. And by us, we want to make sure that a they don't have issues, and, and b and if they do have issues, that it gets resolved most efficiently and as quickly as possible to spend the least time possible. So it couldn't be different. I, sometimes I go on a sales call, and uh, it's very it's very difficult to convert a client that's coming from break fix to convert into managed services because the money money wise it's way it's way different. But I, I just had this other, about a month or two ago where he was fed up with his current IT company, not, not getting the attention he wanted or needed and not being set up and not being secure that he needs to be. He's a, um, a brokerage firm, so they're dealing with a tremendous amount of personal ident identification information. I mean, if any of that information gets leaked or intercepted, so people can take out a mortgage identity fraud to the highest level. And... And uh, when I when I presented my price, I told him I told him what it's going to cost. He's like, "Well, let me go back and see what my what my current IT spend is, and how much IT has been costing me until now." So I told him it, it's not really you're not comparing apples to apples because it's not the same product. I'm here to do everything I can to prevent issues, to prevent the cyber breach, to prevent downtime. And that guy has just really been reacting to issues or so-called issues whenever you felt the it was appropriate to call. Uh, many, another big issue with this break fix model is people refrain from calling their IT company because they know it's going to cost them money. The clock is ticking mm -hmm. and this phone call is going to cost me money. With my, well, not my model, but the, the model that I use is the, is the managed services all inclusive model is that I give, I give the client and all of their employees confidence to pick up the phone whenever for whatever, big or small, and they don't get billed extra for it. It's a flat rate monthly fee. Yeah. And that, I mean, that just makes life so much easier. And, yeah. and I'm going to, I'm going to switch top, you know, kind of change angles a little bit here. You mentioned, you mentioned your sales pitches and you know, all that stuff. And I think that that's one thing that maybe somebody going into business for themselves, starting up on these companies doesn't really realize is that, you're not just going to be doing IT work to be successful. You have to do sales. You have to do marketing. Yeah. You know, you, you, you know, either have to find yourself a good accountant or, or learn how to do your books yourselves. I, I recommend getting as, as someone with a back who, who's gone to school for accounting, I still recommend just get an accountant. <laughs> so. yeah, I, I, accountant so, for sure. Yeah. So. No, there's, there, there's the whole business side and business development side of things that 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 you may not necessarily think of when you're being like, oh, I'm going to go out and I'm going to start fixing people's computers myself and you know start raking in all the dough. So, what like how did how did you approach that? Like, was that was that a big you know intimidating thing or or were you like rearing to go like how how did you approach the non-technical side of running your company okay so it's actually it's actually a great point and thanks for reverting back to that um it it hit me in the face it hit me in the face big time for sure um sales is a, is a huge thing and and the sales process is not technical at all it's a lot of it, it, sales is is it is, is is a huge thing in and of itself. Um, I actually am part of a uh, business growth, sales and marketing community, specifically for IT companies, built for IT companies. Uh, the name of the company or the community is uh, Technology Marketing Toolkit, okay, or Robin Robbins. Huge shout out right now. I mean, no, shoot. but yeah, it's been extremely helpful, and I'm part of that community and part of that program that's been really been educating me as an IT business owner of how to approach sales and how to approach marketing and um, even even IT operations and and setting goals and financial goals and operational goals and and meeting those goals has just been incredible. But 
but for sure, I mean, going going into business, opening an IT company, uh, unless you just want to be a tech for the rest of your life and just be yourself uh, and, and respond to service calls, which I, I don't think anybody wants to do that. People people want, event, I, I think people want financial freedom. People want to build a company. People want to be able to take vacations and take off. Uh, when you open your own company, at least in the beginning or until you structure it correctly and really build it up, it's, it's worse than a job because you don't get to take sick days. You don't get to take vacation days. You, you are tied to the hip of that company unless you, are, unless you build it properly. And that's extremely important. Uh, many people don't think about it. Uh, you can't fully prepare for it because who, 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 could, who could prepare for it? I mean, you got to learn on the job. And sales and marketing is a huge, huge aspect of it. Um, and then operations is also a huge aspect of it. And my, my personal goal is to not be a technician or not be involved in tech. I want to run my company. I want to own my company. Um, and I want to take a step back. That's yeah, and I think I think that makes that makes a lot of sense. You know, I, you know, after after being, you know, on the tech side of things, you know, on the 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 help desk, the the support side for for years, I'm I'm kind of in, I'm in a similar thing. I'm not I'm not looking to go into the in, into the entrepreneurial side, but like I'm ready to to step back and move my, up into you know the management side and that sort of thing. So it's I, I totally get that that mindset of you know okay I'm ready to 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 look at to start looking at the bigger picture, and because that that gives its own set of challenges and you know that's that's what it is for me. It's like it's like overcoming challenges. That's that's what drives me from day to day. That's why I got into IT. That's that's why I continue to grow and push and everything like that. So I I totally get that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a big thing. Um, I know a, a lot of people. Some people have problems asking for money. You know that that can be a huge hurdle in and of itself. You can't open your own company if you can. If you can't ask for money, if you can't demand pricing, if you can't do collections, uh, if you can't ask for raises, you know, you, sometimes you got to go back around to those clients and increase the, the prices, either because of simply simply because of inflation or because because you're losing your pants on them because they're, they're using you a lot more than you they, they should be or 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 that you anticipated. So, I mean, that's also a very important part of being able to own your company or, or build a company. And, and that's a big fear for a lot of people. People have a big fear for asking for money. But more importantly, amongst our community here, us IT people, IT people, and I can speak for, I'm not going to speak for all of us. I can speak for many of us being, being part of an IT community with other peers um, and, and interacting with us. A lot of IT people undervalue what we do. We look at it as, hey, it's simple, it's easy. Yeah, it'll just take me 30 minutes. It's no big deal. It's really no big deal. We undervalue what we do tremendously. And when we undervalue it, we undercharge. And that can lead to massive burnout. And on a personal level, but on a business level, it's catastrophic. You can't survive that way. Because yeah. we all have the same amount of time in a day. And if you're not generating money while you're doing your thing, you can't grow, you can't hire help, you can't hire techs, and then you're stuck with something I described before, worse than a job, because you don't get sick days and you don't get vacation days, and you don't get personal days. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you brought that up because there's there I'm there's a, a, a I don't know how to describe it. Okay, there's there's like a school of thought. There's a behind pricing where you get to a point where uh, you're, you know, you're like, okay, this t is going to take me 10 minutes to fix. And on, on his YouTube channel, the, the future, Chris Doe is talking to people about pricing models and, and that sort of things and like what to charge people. He's doing it more from like a, a, a design perspective. You know, he's talking about doing a logo and, you know, he's saying that, you know, I'll charge, you know, I'm charging eighteen thousand dollars for a logo, but you know, and then the re the rebuttal is, well, I can go and get a, a college student to design one for me for for you know two hundred and fifty bucks. You know, what's what's the difference? And and the 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 gist of what he's saying is that 
he has the experience, the knowledge and all that stuff to get you that logo that you love the first time. He could do it, you know, he could get that logo done in in 10, 15 minutes. And it's it's exactly what you need. Whereas the the you know the the student that you go and charge 250 bucks for, it may take a month of going back and forth. So what's that value to you? So I think what you know, going along kind of what you were saying is that it may take you, it may, it may, to you, it may seem like a simple issue that, you know, you could finish in 10 minutes, but you have gone through, you have the experience, you have the training, you have put through so much effort to be able to solve that problem in a short period of time. And that in and of itself has great value. It does. And so, yeah. so you should never, undervalue your skills just because a task you should never undervalue undervalue a task just because you're able to do it quickly if anything that shows that that has more value yeah yeah but uh un unfortunately it's, it's not the case and the, the it industry is saturated with you know with it professionals and mm -hmm. people are popping up like you know you hit one two pop up uh, with IT, it companies and I'm not going to say it's unique to IT company. Every company has, every, every industry has people that will undercut you and give you the rock bottom pricing. If you shop long enough, you'll get anything you want for cheap enough. Mm -hmm. But I know, I mean, I know that we're, we're, I'm an IT, we're an IT, we're, we're speaking to other IT people. Uh, so I'm going to address what's going on in our community, in our um, industry, that, that there are people that are giving away things for, for nothing and they're completely undervaluing it. Uh, it can go on for too long. They'll realize that they they made a, a grave mistake, because because there's no way for them to grow their company. They're going to realize that they put on they took on way too much liability onto themselves, and then they need to hire help, but they can't afford help, and then they choke, and then they ruin their reputation, and they can't serve their customers, and and then ultimately we get a customer <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> that's when they come on board. We're like, oh, I think we outgrew our current guy, and. He's just not giving us the attention we need, but it, but it does make it more difficult during the sales process. Sometimes, you know, business owners do look at the bottom line, and that's why I do my best during the sales process to to not discuss tech. We're discussing value, and value means different things to different people. And people can put a price tag. Some people can put a price tag on value. You can't really put a price tag on value. It means to different people. So I try to do my best to sell on value, sell on the result, sell on what the vision of what it would look like afterwards as opposed to okay we're going to install an antivirus and we're going to do this and we're going to back up and uh, we're going to monitor your computers you know they don't care the business owners don't know they're busy with their life they're busy with their business they have their pressures they have their financial burdens they have their their payroll they have their employees they have their they, they have their life they don't they don't care about what you're going to do or how you're going to do it they want they want a result they want an experience and, and, and that's what you could put a price on. I mean, that, that's when you can ask for a larger amount of money. As, as soon as you start breaking it down and going down to the weeds and start, you know, I'm gonna give you an antivirus, I'm gonna give you uh, some backups, so I'll give you some of this, some of that. Then you can put a price tag on that because, because it's a commodity. You, you can shop on it online. You can see exactly how, you can see how mm -hmm. exactly it costs and there's no reason why you should be charging more than X, Y, Z for this. And then you start comparing apples to apples. Well, that guy's giving me this, and this guy's giving me that. So that's why I try to take a higher, a different, a different approach on, on selling. That's a that's a good point. And I've I've been saying for a long time that the 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 bottom line, the true goal of IT is to improve business efficiency and effectiveness through tech, you know, through technology. So if you so what you're saying and what I'm taking from it is that, you know, you're don't sell, don't sell SKUs, don't sell, you know, you know, individual products, sell your service, sell the, the, the efficiency that you're able to bring because, uh, you know, it's that efficiency is how you you're helping them become more profitable. That's because if, you know, if there's downtime, if they decide to stick with a, a break fix thing and they have something go down from the time that it goes down to the time that that tech brings it back up, 
it's they're losing money. They're losing, you know, time, productivity, everything like that. Whereas with, you know, with a managed service thing, with a, being more proactive and doing preventative maintenance and stuff like that, they, the, the whole, the whole goal, if you're doing the job right, is that they don't, they don't necessarily see exactly what you're doing because you're doing it well and there are no problems. And that is the value. Yeah, that is definitely the value, but the, it, that comes with challenges too. I mean, this, yes. it, it, it just, this conversation can branch out so far <laughs> because if it goes on long enough where there are no issues and things are working well, then they, why am they, I paying you? Why, why am I paying you? I mean, this is a lot of money. They're going to, one thing may happen and it may cause them to go back to their to their profits and losses. I'm like, why are we paying? When was the last time I even had to call them? You know, why are we paying them so much money? And yeah. and that poses a different issue in and of itself. So that's where the client relationship comes in. And I mentioned earlier, um, having a, a managed service agreement um, uh, structure gives you the opportunity to have a relationship with your client. It doesn't mean you automatically have one. It gives you the opportunity to have one. Because you have a less, you have lesser quantity of clients. So, I know that I do it over here, and this is something. Another thing that I was taught this is not an idea of my own, but I, I, I make sure to have a, a quarterly business review, a quarterly business meeting, or depending on the size of the company, sometimes it'll be semi-annually because three months may be too often for some people. But I'll make sure to have an in-person meeting. I'll come down uh, with muffins and some drinks or whatever, and. <laughs> pizza sometimes and I'll come down to the person to, 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 to my customer my clients office and we have a 34 30 30 to one hour minute uh, chat 30 to one hour 30 minute to one hour chat um, and it's just anything and anything just really catching up really really friendly and then it also gives an opportunity, it gives us an opportunity to uh, review what we've been doing and how many tickets we've been solving and how much time we spent and invested in your company. Uh, we also have an opportunity to to um, sell them new things. So if their server is getting old and it's time for an upgrade, that's the time we t we take to to kind of present those those upgrades. And it's great for relationships. It's incredible. It's an amazing for relationships, and it's also great for generating new business. To be very honest. Yeah, um, I mean, I think. I think to the vendor relationships that I have for, you know, the people, for the vendors we use here at Jump Cloud, and the most successful ones are the ones that, you know, now that I think of it, are the ones that, that kind of follow that same model as you, where, you know, we, we meet up quarterly, you know, and, and go over, you know, like usage and we go over, you know, what's coming and, all that stuff. And so that's, that's actually a really good, that's a really good advice and really good suggestion. Cause it's, I mean, from my perspective, that's, that has worked being on the, you know, it's worked well for me being on the customer side of the relationship. Good it's, not, call it's, not, there. it's not my own advice, but I do my best to execute um, and, and make it happen. And it's been really, it's been really good. Um, another thing I do for relationship building is I actually, part of the onboarding process is I collect my clients' birthdays and it's just the month, the month and the day. I don't need the year. That's already uh, personal information, but I don't just collect their birthdays. I collect all the users, all the end users' birthdays as well. Um, and I plug all that information to my CRM and I have a... You know the CRM notifies me five days prior to their to their birthday, and if it's a CEO, partner, or decision maker, you know a key a key employee, then we'll actually send them a candy platter, a chocolate platter. We we, we stock them. We have about 20, 20 chocolate platters in stock at any, at any day. Uh, and if it's just a regular employee, then we send them a card. We have a branded birthday card it has my County Connect logo on it. So this is the birthday card. That I have. Oh yeah. Okay. We just take this, and then this is a candy. This is a chocolate platter, little not nine-piece high-end <laughs> chocolate platter. And uh, depending on who it is, I'll just I'll just grab a card, slip it into an envelope, print out a label, 
and put on a stamp on it and send it out. And five days prior to the birthday, it literally lands on or a day before the birthday. And it makes such a huge impression for them. You know, what do you think this cost me? The whole package cost me 40 bucks between, between the chocolates and the shipping. You know, the chocolates, I, I can't stuff in the mail. I use UPS, but, but um, they absolutely love the gesture. It's incredible. Um, they love it, love it, love it. I get incredible feedback all the way up from these big untouchable CEOs down to, down to the receptionists. And, and, and I love it when I go to visit people's offices and then I see the card stuck on their wall, on their little bulletin board, that they won't even throw it out and it sits right there. It's really, really good. Now, I got this advice. How this all started is actually one of my vendors said it was a week it was the week of my birthday and it wasn't just my vendor it was actually robin robbins it was a technology market toolkit one i mentioned before the marketing company they sent me a birthday package on the week of my birthday and i was not expecting it now i'm expecting it already because i know what happened last year <laughs> but um i was not expecting it i get this box i open it up full of confetti with with cakes and chocolates and stuff with a birthday with a, with a card and wishing me happy birthday and i i was so I was so moved and I loved it. I was like, wow, I am doing this. I am doing this. I mean, I'm doing this for my clients, hands down. And then, and then I was, uh, I was advised to go take it a step further and not only do it for your clients, but do it for their employees. And I mean, you don't have to send them a platter, you can send them a card because when the employee, because CEOs are CEOs, they're here to stay. Mm-hmm. Employees, they relocate to different states, they get fired, they quit, they move, they have different circumstances. And if they're happy with you, and if you really, really impress them and make them feel good, they'll take you with them. So they'll go to a new job and they'll say, you know, you guys are dealing with IT issues. The last company we dealt with was great. And then there's another referral from a, from a happy customer. So that's, that's my strategy. Yeah. And that, that makes perfect sense. Just that, that personal touch. That's, you know, just that, that little extra effort to show that, that you recognize them. And that you know that you're that you recognize that they're people that you're. Ah, oh, oh, I love that. I yeah. absolutely love that. And the fact that you do it for the employees and not just you know the management and decision makers is is an extra. Just it, it makes it makes perfect sense from a business standpoint, and I can see how from that relationship standpoint that just it just solidifies it even further that's, oh, that's awesome and and everything we're discussing right now has nothing to do with it this has exactly. nothing to do with tech this is this is marketing this is sales this is business growth this is relationships this has nothing to do with fixing your computer or or, or helping you out with the virus and again this is feeding back to the way the beginning of a conversation this is so important and something you have to realize before you, you take the, the leap and open your own company. There's so much going on. It's not just about being good at fixing computers. If you're good at fixing computers, go get a job at Google or something. Don't jump in and open your own company because you're good at fixing computers. It's it's really not. It's really not the, the, the solution to the problem. Exactly. And and I want to I do want to make sure, you know, when we're as we're talking about the non-technical side of things. I, I really want to make sure that there's something that's very important to touch on when you in, when you're talking about starting a business. Period. Doesn't matter what kind it is, and that is making sure that you are covered from, you know, you you have everything set up properly from like the legal standpoint. You know, creating an organization, cre- you know, doing doing your your taxes and everything like that. You know, business insurance, all that. The one thing I want to to focus on because it, it popped up when we had our initial conversation about this topic was you know if you're going to go into a company you need to form a business entity of some sort and what's involved with that you know we can't you know it's you know whether it's forming an LLC an S corp something you know a sole proprietorship anything like that it's going to vary significantly state by state because I remember when, you know, when I was talking to you and I, I, I made the comment of, you know, even though I do just very, very little business on the side, you know, at a, in a break fix capacity, I went to, and I formed an LLC just to make sure my, 
my bases were covered and I was, I was good on, you know, in the eyes of the, the Colorado department of revenue. And, and you made the comment of how, how just maintaining that is eating up all of the money that I'm making. Cause I don't, I don't make an, that much money off the, on the side. And that's because in New York, it is, yeah. it is a lot more expensive. I spend it's, it costs me like maybe between 30 and 50 bucks to set up online and like 10 bucks a year to maintain. Yeah, but, for me, for me, I, mean, I don't, I don't currently have an LLC, but I did, I did, um, I did, I did, I did open an LLC way, you know, way back when, different circumstances, different situation, uh, and it cost me, if I remember correctly, no less than fifteen hundred dollars between you know getting it set up correctly, and, and it requires a publication, and it requires and a publication in Albany, or who knows what, a lot of bureaucracy. Um, but it cost it cost me fifteen hundred dollars to do. That. Yeah, and so you know, just the yeah, you know, we don't have to go like super in depth because you know that would be that would be impossible because of how varied it is. But just, I just want to 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 press the issue that you know if you're going to be doing this, check with your you know your state laws and what's involved, and because that that may be the de deciding factor. If you don't want to, if your state does not you know requires a bunch of hoops that you have to jump through, you may decide it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. And or if it's or on the flip side, if it's like Colorado where it's really easy. To, to get set up and I was able to do it in, you know, 20 minutes online that, you know, it may be like, Hey, this is easy. And it may cause you to go into it maybe before you're ready. So I don't know. I'm just, I guess, yeah, if it's something that's very important when you're going to start in your, start up your business and definitely look into your state and local laws you know and regulations and requirements for doing so that's that's all i really had to say about that i felt it should be thrown in there at some point so that that's from a financial structure point of view but you also mentioned it briefly where uh having proper insurance coverage um, yes and that is a big oversight uh, including on my end and again i'm, I'm like i mentioned earlier I'm, I'm i'm only at my company for three and a half years now so i'm still fairly fairly new but when I started out, I contacted um, you know, a family insurance broker, somebody that we've been using in the family, and says, hey, I need errors and emissions insurance for my company. Sure, no problem, we got you. you Sign me up, what's your revenue, what's your this, what's your that, one million, two million per situation, per year, have a good day, you got yourself insurance. And, and that's it, I didn't think twice about it. And then, I'm, and then I spoke to a colleague, and uh, well, Situations happened, I mean, not nothing by me, but in my community, I had uh, another IT company that suffered a breach, and um, which then caused his clients to get breached by ransomware, and he was on the hook for more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of paying ransomware to get back all his clients' data. Um, so that prompted me to look into my policy to see: am, am I am I covered for that? I mean, is, is that going to be? I'm going to do my best to do everything I can to protect my clients, but. Cybersecurity is, is huge, and you leave one door open by mistake, or one outdated version of a piece of software, or, or 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 sometimes it's not even your problem. Sometimes it's a program you're using, and they're not being secure enough. And next thing you know, is you're dealing with a cyber attack, and it could result in affecting your clients. Am I covered for that? You know, if I need to call somebody and say, "Hey, I need two hundred fifty thousand dollars to bail out my customers," who's going to be there for me? So I prompted me to look into it, and it turns out that my coverage was slim to nothing when it came to having proper cyber protection. And it wasn't just a regular cyber protection, it's a special, a special um, insurance policy and insurance coverage for IT companies specifically. And I now do, I mean, my premiums went up like crazy because I now have the proper policy before it was nothing. And I'm paying four times the amount of money, but I now know that if something were to happen either by an error of myself or my team, or if something happened with the, the technology or platform that I'm using and they suffered a breach, which then resulted in some sort of a breach for my clients or me, be, or me not being able to perform my duties for my clients or put me out of business right. early. I now know that I'm covered from head to toe with more than a million of dollars of coverage in any situation. And that is a ton of money. And it covers everything from from 
it's just, I'm not, not going to go into to, to, to the weeds, but it really, I have prop recovery right now. And, 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 my, and in turn, my clients have prop recovery. It's not just me. My clients are now have prop recovery to recover from something that, you know, hopefully nothing and hopefully never. But it's extremely important to have it there. And I know if I made this mistake, I know many, many, many other people are doing the same mistake as well. And, mm-hmm. and I plan to build this into my sales process as well to give the prospect comfort and knowing that should something go bad and, and not counting on anything, but we are properly secured and we have the money and the funding and the, and the, and the, and the support behind us and the backbone behind us to back us up and put our money where our mouth is. Um, should something go wrong? And it's also extremely important. Just like a financial structure, you got to have that coverage for you too. Yeah, definitely. That's, you know, all of these things, all of these things go into running a, su- a successful company, you know, that, you, that you, know, you build. And and I am so very grateful that you came on and that we could, that we could chat about this. And, you know, I, I, I could keep going. Yeah, <laughs> going we could this. really go on for hours, for sure, yeah. for sure. <laughs> so, uh, so but we are, we are out of time now. So I, I really do appreciate you coming on, Liddy, and, and talking to me about all the stuff and geeking about not only you know about the business side because I geek out about the business side of things too. So that's uh, thank you again. Um, again, my guest is Yiddy Lemmer, and best of best of luck to you in your ventures. And I, I hope that that our listeners get some get some value out of your experience and your advice. Absolutely. I'd love to hear back. I mean, people can contact me. My, I'm on LinkedIn, on Google. Uh, if you thought this was valuable, sh- uh, shoot me a message. I mean, I'd love to hear back. Thank you for tuning in to Where's the Any Key? If you like what you heard, please feel free to subscribe. Again, my name is Ryan Bacon. I lead IT at JumpCloud, where the team here is building a cloud-based directory platform that provides frictionless secure access to virtually any IT resource from trusted devices anywhere. You can learn more and even set up a free account at jumpcloud.com.